I've been really on my own when I think about it Yeah, my house is not a home when I think about it I've been feeling so alone when I think about it Yeah, nobody really got me when I think about it What is good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Simica I'm back here again with another reaction video for you guys today For today's reaction video, we got 20 kids who went to jail for crazy reasons Let's jump up in it pretty much the worst thing that can happen if you're an adult. But what about kids who end up in jail? It happens all the time. In fact, as there are some really bad kids out there in the world. And sometimes there's just no other option left other than to jail them for the safety of others. From the teen who killed a newborn baby to the youngest American ever given a life sentence, here's 20 kids who went to jail for crazy reasons. <laughs> <sighs> Number 20. Nicole Kimpfmiller, teen charged with newborn's murder. Wild. Here's the crazy and sad story of a Williams Township, Pennsylvania teen who was charged with killing her newborn son. Nicole M. Kimpfmiller, who was 19 at the time, went before circuit judge Joseph K. Sharan in 2010 and pleaded no contest to involuntary manslaughter, a 15-year felony, and disposal of a dead body, a 10-year felony. Kipfmiller's mother and other family members sat in the courtroom during the hearing. Many of them wiped away tears and shook their heads. Kipfmiller went to a clinic on May 26, 2009 to take a pregnancy test. She found out that the test was positive the next day. Records show that Kipfmiller brought a home birthing kit on the internet on December 7, 2009. Marushko says that Kip Miller and her boyfriend, Zach Lang, started talking on the phone and sending text messages early on December 10th. The prosecutor said that in the afternoon, Kip Miller went online to look for tips on how to cut an umbilical cord and stop bleeding after giving birth. After that, things went very badly wrong. Bay County Sheriff's deputies found the body of Kip Miller's newborn son in a commercial trash can on early December 11th, 2009. And an Bro. Tupac, man. That's all I can think. Tupac. Brenda's got a baby. Now, Brenda's got a baby, but Brenda's baby got a brain. Dad's the same. The girl could hardly spell her name. That's all I can think about, man. You really gonna throw your, your child in a trash? Trash fill? Like, come on, man. An autopsy showed that the baby, a month premature, had been strangled to death. As the deputy was taking Kip Miller away, a relative who didn't want to give her name yelled, The father did it! Even though he admitted being involved, the father was not charged with anything in the case. Seems like such a sad loss, which could have been so different for this family. Wait, 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 wait. The father didn't get charged even though he admitted he was involved in it? That's crazy too, man. I mean... For me personally, you involved, bro. Like you you guilty as well. You feel me? Like you you played a part in that just as much as she did. You should be charged too. That's crazy, man. Oh sick. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Lionel Alexander Tate Lionel Alexander Tate is the youngest U.S. citizen who has ever been sentenced to life in prison without the chance of getting out. Tate was found guilty of first-degree murder in 2001 when he was just 14 years old. He had killed six-year-old Tiffany Eunuch in Broadward County, Florida in 1998 by beating her to death. Tate's lawyer said that the 12-year-old boy, who weighed 166 pounds at the time, was playing with the 6-year-old girl, who weighed just 46 pounds, and accidentally killed her while showing her professional wrestling moves he said he saw on TV. Tate was found guilty of killing Eunuch by stomping so hard on her that she burst her liver. She also had a broken skull, a broken rib, and a brain that was severely swollen. Holy the prosecution said that these wounds were similar to those that she would have sustained by falling from a three-story building. 
After Tate was found guilty, the prosecution openly agreed with his request for a lighter sentence, and even offered to help him with his appeal. But then the trial judge criticized the prosecution for breaking the rules of the adversarial system, and said that if they didn't think he should get life in prison, they shouldn't have charged him with murder in the first place. In January of 2004, a, a state appeals court threw out his conviction because he hadn't been tested for mental competence before the trial. He was then freed. A year later, he was given 30 years in prison because he severely and violently beat up a Domino's pizza delivery driver. See? 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 The system, man. The system, bro. Look, I, I, I agree that people can change, you know. I agree. But when it comes to murders and, and things of that nature, no. No, they, they have an itching for that. You can't overlook that. That's the, that. That doesn't happen by accident. You don't go out and point a gun at someone and then pull the trigger and be like, oh, no, it was an accident. No, 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 no. You don't beat someone to the point where it looks like they fell off a three-story building and then say it's an accident. That doesn't happen. That does not happen. In my mind, in my opinion, that person will keep doing that. It's like a it's like an itch that they can't stretch until they do it again. And we heard we heard stories about this time and time again and stole $30 worth of pizzas. Ah, kind of makes me wonder if maybe they shouldn't have kept him a little bit longer the first time. Man! Number 18, Petri Kurti. This 13-year-old boy is one of the UK's youngest murderers. Petri Kurti killed a woman he had just robbed by stamping so hard on her face that he left a boot print in her cheek. CCTV oh footage shows goodness. the horrific scene when Kurti attacked and killed Glynis Bensley, who was 47 years old, on a street she had walked down every day for years. He then ran to a nearby park in Smethwick, West Midlands, and bragged about the brutal attack, which is usually a bad idea if you don't want to go to jail. The schoolboy was sentenced to at least 12 years in prison and will be on probation for the rest of his life. Zoheb Majid, age 20, who was also in the case, was given 10 years in prison for manslaughter and robbery. Judge John Warner told the court that the boy had been running wild at home. The court already heard about the two of them working together to plan and carry out a violent robbery. Curti jumped Mrs. Bensley in the street as she walked home from the Seven Stars pub, and the whole event was caught on CCTV. Quick make sure you have tissues on hand warning. Dawn, Mrs. Bensley's sister, said of the charity worker, She loved working for charities. She liked helping people and would do it for anyone. Number seven. Why does bad things happen to good people, bro? Man, y'all better throw away that damn key on that, man. Come on, bro. 17. Alex King, who at 12 confessed to killing his father, arrested in Florida crash. Derek King, who was just 13 years old at the time, snuck up on his sleeping father on November 26, 2001, and killed him with an aluminum baseball bat. Alex King, Derek's younger brother, was also part of the plan to kill their father, Terry King, who was 40 years old. Alex was only 12. The boys then set their house on Cantonment, Florida on fire to hide what they had done. When authorities in Escambia realized something was wrong with the story, the boys came clean. Reports said that the King brothers killed their father. This is a letter addressed to Terry. Is that right? Yes, sir. Who is Terry in this letter? My dad. Because convicted child molester Rick Chavez convinced them to. The Kings were tried as adults, and Derek was given eight years in prison. Alex was sent to a juvenile detention center for seven years. By 2009, both Derek and Alex had been released from prison. They had spent about a third of their young lives behind bars. Derek is still living in Florida. Alex was put back in jail for a short time in 2011 for breaking his parole. When he got out, he moved to Texas. Chavez was found guilty of being involved in the death of Terry King and other crimes, and he was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Number 16, Robert Thompson and John Venables. 
James Bulger, who was just two years old, was kidnapped from Bootle, England on February 12, 1993 by 10-year-olds. The two 10-year-olds' names were Robert Thompson and John Venables. They committed one of England's most notorious crimes. Then, after torturing and killing him in a particularly brutal way, they put his body on train tracks where it was cut in half by a passing train, hoping that this would cover their crime. At first glance, Robert Thompson and John Venables looked like two normal 10-year-old boys. But in 1993, these two British boys turned into cold-blooded killers and murdered this two-year-old. The United Kingdom was shocked to the core by how young they were and how cruel their crime was. Robert Thompson and John Venables took James Bulger from the New Strand shopping center in Bootle, while his mother let go of his hand for a moment to take her purse from her handbag. Bro, that is so wild, bro. That this, this kid would never grow up and experience life. Like, he didn't even have a choice, you know? And that's what hurts so much, is that that kid was helpless. You know, and it, it and it's sad for all parties, to be honest, you know, because these kids are throwing away they, their, their life, you know, they're throwing away their life for what, for what? And I'm a firm believer in you're just evil is it, it, it's you're born with it. People always tell me. Like, no, like, you know, home life and this and that. No. I had a shit home life. I had a shitty home life. And I know hella people that had even worse home life and childhoods than me. They ain't out here hurting other people like that. They ain't out here committing these crimes, these murders. Taking innocent lives away from people. I think you're born evil, dog. I think it's just, it's, it's in you. Then they took him to a place in Liverpool called Walton, where they began their sadistic torture of the helpless child. The police were at a loss and no one expected the culprits to be other children. Before long, however, an anonymous caller told the police that Thompson and Venables were the one that killed Bulger. The caller said that both the boys were not at school the day Bulger went missing, and that there might have been evidence of a crime on Venables' jacket, and there was indeed blue paint that had been used to blind Bulger during his torture, as well as blood all over his shoes. Wow. Both boys were soon arrested, and it did not take long for them to turn on each other. Even though it's been almost 30 years, the story of Robert Thompson and John Venables is still shocking. But their story didn't come to an end in 1993. They were released after relatively short terms and given new identities to live new lives. Thompson, the believed ringleader, stayed out of trouble and has married a man. But Venables is now back in prison on serious charges of child abuse committed during his release. Number 15. Curtis Fairchild Jones Curtis Fairchild Jones went to a prison when he was just 12 years old. In 2015, he walked out of the big house one morning as a 29-year-old man. Officials at South Bay Correctional Facility, which is just south of Lake Okeechobee, Florida, confirmed that Jones was finally let out of jail. He leaves prison as a convicted murderer, a victim of sexual abuse as a child, and the brother of a sister who was, coincidentally, released from prison the same week that he was. He's also a Christian minister. Time will tell if he's been able to deal with the demons that haunted him as a child and made him kill someone. In 1999, Curtis and Catherine, his older sister by a year, killed Sonia Nicole Spates, who was dating their father. They also wanted to kill their father and a male relative who they said was sexually abusing them. Even after investigators from what is now the Department of Children and Families found proof that they were being abused, nobody believed it. They used their father- Okay. See? See? Shit like that, man. Like, you being sexually abused and stuff like that, I get it. I get why you would plot. I get it. Understood. You feel me? Understood. Some people might think, oh, Simba, no, that's wrong. Nah, bro. There's, there's certain things that is justifiable in my book. You feel me? You out here molesting kids, especially your own kids? You're supposed to protect and love? Care for? You deserve what's coming to you. 
father's handgun to shoot Spates, and four of the nine bullets they fired hit her. Next up for these children was a long stretch in prison. Number 14, Christian Fernandez. Bianella Susana, a mother from Jacksonville, says that her life has turned into one of suffering from her prison cell, once again in Florida. In a letter, the 25-year-old woman said that her two-year-old son, David Galarraga's death, was the worst thing that had ever happened to her. He will always live in my heart, she said. Susanna also said how sad she was that her 12-year-old son, Christian Fernandez, might have to spend the rest of his life in jail. Christian is the youngest person in Jacksonville who's ever been charged charged with first-degree murder. Christian killed his half-brother David by slamming him against a bookcase when Susanna wasn't home. In the end, Susanna was charged with aggravated child manslaughter by the police. They said that her carelessness led to David's death. A doctor told the police that the two-year-old's injuries, which included a broken skull, might not have been as bad if the mother had gone to the hospital sooner. Susanna's arrest record says that she put ice on the two-year-old's head and waited two hours before going to the hospital. It also says that when Christian broke David's leg two months prior to the murder, she told him to lie about what had happened. Bro, what? What? Oh yeah, you deserve to be in prison, bro. You deserve to be in prison. Both of y'all deserve to be in prison, bro. How can you look at your child and be like, yeah, nah, put some ice on that, you know? Take that kid to the hospital. You see he bleeding out his head and stuff. Like, you don't, come on. In protecting her eldest son, she put the life of her youngest in deadly danger. Definitely a tragedy for that whole family. Number 13, Eric Smith. Eric Smith spent 28 years in prison for killing Derek Robbie, who was four years old at the time, in 1993. He got out of prison in February of 2022. Doreen Robbie always made sure to walk with her four-year-old son Derek the short distance to a park nearby the family's home in Savona, New York. But that morning, Derek's baby brother was crying, so she had to take care of him and let Derek walk the short stretch to the park alone. Storm clouds moved in soon after Derek Robbie left home, and it started to rain. Doreen Robbie remembered, I had an awful feeling as she ran to the park to pick up Derek. Once there, she found out that he didn't show up. Nearly five hours later, Derek's body was found near the same park in a small patch of woods. Later, evidence showed that Derek was lured into the woods where he was strangled, beaten with rocks, and had Kool-Aid poured on his wounds. As the investigation went on, the police talked to Eric Smith, a 13-year-old boy from the area. But Smith's family and the investigators thought he knew more than he was telling them. I'm sorry, Mom. I killed the little boy. That's what Eric Smith told his grandfather after the family begged him to tell them what he saw the day that Derek Robbie was killed. The whole nation was shocked because they didn't understand how such a young and innocent looking boy could have done something so terrible. Number 12, Antonio Barbu. Back in 2013, as he was given his sentence, this 14-year-old boy who killed his 78-year-old great-grandmother with a hatchet broke down and cried in court. Antonio Barbu had just been sentenced to at least 36 years in prison for the murder. When he turns 50, he'll be free again, but his whole youth will be behind him. Barbu tried to read an apology, but he started crying. He gave the statement to his defense lawyer, who also had to fight back tears as he tried to read it. Barbara Olson was killed in her home in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, with a hatchet by Barbu and his friend Nathan Pape. She invited them into her house, and when she turned around to call Barbu's mother, Barbu hit her on the head with the hatchet. He said that he then ran to the bathroom because he felt sick, but when he came back out, he saw Pape hit the senior several times with a hammer. The court decided that Barbu's brain injury from a car accident in 2009 then I looked at Nate and nodded and shook my head as in. Left him with an unspecified cognitive disorder that played a role in his decision to commit a crime. Even though he was suffering from this brain injury, that didn't make the murder any less brutal. And now he's in prison for a long, long time. Number 11, Elizabeth and Sandra Anderson. 
It's scary to think about kids who killed their parents, especially if those kids are now back out and living free again. Linda Anderson's two daughters, Elizabeth and Sandra, are two such children. Because the murder happened when both girls were under 18, the Canadian court did not reveal their true identities. Instead, their story was told using aliases. If you live in Canada, you might already know about these sisters and not even be aware of their terrible past. Linda Anderson was killed on January 18, 2003, when her two daughters decided they could no longer deal with their mother's drinking and depression. At their home in Mississauga, Ontario, the two girls gave Linda drugs and then drowned her in the bathtub. Wow. Police soon found out about the murder because the teenage girls told their friends all about it, and the friends informed the police. The girls were found guilty and sentenced to 10 years in prison. After four years, they were let out on parole. Both of them went to college, and they're both in their 20s now, living under new identities. Number 10. Bro, what? Brenda Spencer. The Cleveland Elementary School shooting happened in San Diego, California on January 29, 1979. Two people died, the principal and a custodian. Eight children and police officers were injured. Brenda Spencer, a 16-year-old girl who lived across the street from the school, was found guilty of these shootings. She was sentenced to life in prison with the chance of parole after 25 years. After the shooting, a reporter called Spencer while she was still barricaded at home and asked her why she did what she did. She supposedly replied, I don't like Mondays, this brightens up the day, which inspired Bob Geldof and Johnny Fingers to write the famous Boomtown Rat song, I Don't Like Mondays. People who knew Spencer said that she didn't like policemen, talked about shooting one, and talked about doing something big to get on TV. Spencer started shooting from her home at kids waiting for Grover Cleveland Elementary's 53-year-old principal, Burton Rag, to open the gates. Spencer then locked herself in her house for several hours after the shooting. She gave up after many hours and left the house in the end, reportedly because she was promised a Burger King meal by the negotiators. Number 9. David Pecora in 2014, David Pecora of Mississauga, Ontario, pleaded guilty in a court of Wilmington, Delaware, to charges that he stole secret software and data from the U.S. military, Microsoft, and a number of well-known video game developers, and it all happened while he was just a teen. Pecora, who's now 22 years old, was accused of being part of a hacking ring with people from Canada, the U.S., and Australia. Four people were named in the 18-count indictment, which included charges like conspiracy to commit computer fraud, copyright infringement, and theft of trade secrets. It's thought that the hackers used stolen names and passwords to get into pre-released versions of the popular video games Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 I and remember Gears of this. War 3, as well as a version I of a I remember the article on that, man. My whole thing about that stuff is if you're smart enough to go past all these security measures online and stuff like that. Just go build, one, your own game, your own software. You know, like, make money off of it. Like, obviously, you're smart. Obviously, you have all these, you know, skills. Go do something with it. That's all you got to do. Population program used to train attack helicopter pilots in the U.S. Army. The U.S. Department of Justice estimated that the ring stole intellectual property and data worth between $100 million and $200 million and planned to sell, use, and share stolen materials with other people online. He was given an 18-month prison sentence for his trouble. Number 8. Armarjit Sada was the world's youngest serial killer. An Indian from Bihar named Amarjeet Sada is said to be the youngest serial killer. By the time he was eight, he had already killed three people. Damn! Sada, who was born in 1998, killed several of his family members in a number of different ways between 2006 and 2007. Reports say that he killed his six-year-old cousin when he was seven years old. Later, when his sister was only eight months old, he killed her too. Sada's past isn't known, but we do know that he comes from a poor family and that his father works as a laborer. And furthermore, he's now walking free. Sada freely admitted his crimes. He told the police that he had hit the baby's mother with bricks and then struck. Bro, I don't understand how you're walking free. I, I, I don't understand that, that theory of, as a kid, you can commit all these murders and then just be given back to the world at, you know, 20, 25, 
like <laughs> eight bodies, bro. He had eight bodies. Like what? Strangled her. He even showed local cops where he tried to bury the body. Sada's uncle said that the first two murders were kept secret because it was a family problem. Sada was only detained in a children's home because Indian law says that minors can't be locked up in prison. After being set free in 2016, no one knows where he is now. But he seems like someone that you probably want to avoid at all costs. Number 7. Daniel Bartlam Back in 2012, a 15-year-old boy named Daniel Bartlam killed his mother with a hammer and burned her body. He was sentenced to at least 16 years in prison. Bartlam initially said that he didn't kill his mother, Jacqueline Bartlam, but he did eventually admit to killing her after a fight at their home in Nottinghamshire, England. She had been hit seven times with a claw hammer, which broke her face and skull, the court heard. On Daniel's computer, police discovered that he had written a murder plot for a soap opera that he was working on. He was also obsessed with a murder plot line in his favorite TV soap, Coronation Street. The court heard that after he killed his mother, her body was stuffed with paper, covered in gasoline, and set on fire. Daniel, who was just 14 years old at the time, told the police that an intruder did it. Daniel had been watching violent horror movies since he was 8 years old, and he had watched the movie Saw just hours before killing his mother. Wow. During an argument, the teen said that his mother called him a freak, which made him want to hurt her, and soon after, a tragedy unfolded. Number 6. Wow. Mary Bell. Mary Bell was just 11 years old when she killed two young children and was sentenced to life in prison in 1968. She was released from prison just 12 years later and now lives in anonymity. Bell was only 10 years old when she strangled her first victim, a 4-year-old boy, and left his family haunting anonymous confession notes. Mm -hmm, Two man. months later, she tortured and killed another boy who was only 3 years old. Martin Brown was Bro. only 4 years old when Mary Bell strangled him to death in an empty house in Scotswood, England on May 25th, the day before she turned 11. Police were puzzled. A little blood and saliva were on the victim's face, but other than that, there were no obvious signs of violence. Mary, however, was telling her classmates that she had killed Martin Brown. No one believed what she said because she was known as a show-off and a liar. That is, until the body of another young boy was found. Mary Bell and her friend Norma strangled three-year-old Brian Howe on July 31st, two months after the first murder. This time, Bell used scissors to cut up the body, cutting his thighs and his penis. On the day Brian was buried, Mary was seen hanging outside of his house. When she oh, saw his hell coffin, no. she laughed and rubbed her hands together. Finally, police called her back for a second interview, and Mary made up a story about seeing an eight-year-old boy hit Brian on the head the day that he died. She may have said this because she knew that police were getting closer to the truth. She said that the boy was carrying a broken pair of scissors when they asked her about any weapons. That was Mary Bell's big mistake. The press and the public didn't know that the body had been cut up with scissors. It was a fact that only the police and the person who killed Brian knew, and that meant that she was the one to the shock of an entire nation. Number 5. Four-year-old Saudi boy who accidentally shot his father. In a tragic accident, a Saudi boy who accidentally killed his father shocked his mother and 14 brothers and sisters, and he's now saying that he doesn't think his father is dead and that he'll come back to him soon. What a tragic incident. According to his uncle, Nawaf accidentally killed his 33-year-old father, Morif Al-Fifi, when he played with his loaded gun. This contradicts reports that he did it on purpose because his father wouldn't buy him a PlayStation. His brothers, on the other hand, say that he's a big fan of cartoons and could have been imitating one of his favorite characters when he shot his father at home in the southern province of Jazan. A newspaper called the boy the youngest killer in Saudi Arabia, and it sounds like he's going to have a pretty tough time coming to terms with these events as he grows older. Number 4. Why a 9-year-old boy with autism got arrested at school when Devin Shepard, a fourth grader at Needham Elementary School in Franklin, Indiana, got into a fight with a classmate during recess, the police were called. 
the boy hit her when a teacher tried to help. As the boy was being taken out of elementary school, he couldn't stop crying. He was put in the front seat of a police car like a grown man, now an autistic fourth grader. Devin says that a fight broke out on the school playground because one of his classmates was bullying him. Devin was charged with assault and causing damage to property. The local police department says that the officers who held the boy did so in the right way, but the Wait a minute, he was he, he was charged with assault for fighting in school? Look, man, I got into a lot of fights at school, bro. A lot of fights and some bad ones. Like, I'm talking about riots and stuff. Never got charged with assault. Never, never got handcuffed. I got suspended. I got expelled. Went to consolation school. Never got charged with assault. That's the general crazy. public was outraged at this excessive use of force. Devin was arrested and held for 20 minutes before he was let go. Since then, all charges against him have been dropped. Number 3. 10 year old boy arrested for sending threatening messages, cops say. In May of 2022, a 10 year old Florida boy in the fifth grade was arrested and charged with making a written threat to shoot up a school. When the suspect, a student at Patriot Elementary School in Cape Coral, Florida, allegedly sent the threatening text, the school threat enforcement team was notified right away, police said, and they started doing an analysis. Due to the child's age, the case was taken over by the Youth Services Criminal Investigations Division. After detectives talked to the boy and found a good reason, reason to arrest him, the police took him into custody. In the wake of the deadly mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas, in which 18-year-old gunman Salvador Ramos killed 19 children and two teachers, there are very strict responses now to threats like these. Number 2. UHP Trooper Pulls Over 5-Year-Old Boy Driving Parent's Car Troopers what? with the Utah Highway Patrol say that a five-year-old boy was stopped while driving his parents' car on the freeway at the start of the pandemic back in 2020. The patrol said that a trooper in Weber County stopped a car because he thought the driver was drunk. Turned out it was a five-year-old boy. Wow, he was actually doing a pretty good job, all things considering. And look at that nice controlled stop on the shoulder. UHP said the boy told troopers he left home after a fight with his mom, during which she told him she wouldn't buy him a Lamborghini. So he decided to take the family car and buy one for himself in California. Troopers said that he might not have had quite enough money to pay for the supercar because he only had $3 in his wallet. Well, maybe he was trying to get some kind of a deal based on his really good driving skills. That's crazy, bro. Number one. What? Video shows Whitehall police catch three teens and a 12-year-old in a stolen Hyundai. In August of 2022, three Ohio teens and a 12-year-old were arrested after they crashed a stolen Hyundai into a Whitehall police car. Three police cars got in front of the Hyundai and stopped it from continuing. The driver, who police said was 16 years old, tried to get away by crashing into the police car and another car. Officers were able to get the Hyundai jammed between the other cars and bring the joy ride to a halt. Bro, what? The driver of the stolen car was in fact 16 years old and the other three passengers were also pretty young, 12, 13, and 15 years old. Bro, but you're 16, you know better than that. Like, you know better. Especially with this situation, like, if they're backing you in, you feel me, like, boxing you in, you know not to ram your car into, the, like, you should know better. Police said that when they pulled the 16-year-old out of the car, he was smiling and laughing. But I guarantee he won't be laughing when a sentence gets read out loud. Man. Are you more worried about- Nah, these are wild, bro. Truly wild. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. Thank you guys for commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.